time for Sound Euphonium episode 9 of season 3 and I'm excited for this because last week we ended the episode with uh, our girl Kumiko not getting the part or not getting the solo. She's still playing. I'll tell you who's not playing, Kanade. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's still playing but she didn't she didn't get the solo she wanted um, which is devastating. So um but like it's also expected and this is kind of what the season was leading to and hinting at the entire time and that's what Mayu was scared about and that's why she wasn't wanting to try hard but now it's happening so now we see the fallout now it's the responsibility in my opinion of Kumiko to handle it well she's been such an excellent character this season so far like she is she's gone above and beyond she's done I feel like everything pretty much right you know um, so now I'm, I'm trusting in her once again to do what I think is the right thing and, uh, not take it too hard, support Mayu with everything she's got, make her feel comfortable and welcome, hype her up to other people, stuff like that. But I feel like, I don't know, like, I feel like she's going to play it off in this episode. Like, oh no, it's fine. It's fine. You know, I did say this, but I don't want her to like, let anything slip through and, you know, upset, um... Mayu, because I feel like that could happen. I don't know what Kanade is going to do. She's probably going to make some bitchy comments. <laughs> She's a little shit, but we love her for it. So we're jumping into episode nine of season three of Sound Euphonium. Let's just jump into it. Here we go. <sighs> Yay, we're so excited. Jeez, get the fuck out if you're not in the competition. Yeah, you're both in the competition. <laughs> yes. Good job, Kumiko! Bye, Kanade. Get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm only being mean to Kanade because I love her so much. <laughs> It's like when you can make fun of your friends, but you don't want other people to make fun of your friends. Oh, Mayu looks so miserable for someone who just got the solo. Dissonant tuning. It's your turn to shine. I like the way he words his criticisms. Like, he words it like it's that's what's awesome for them. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there you go, that loosens him up a bit. <laughs> you took away his big moment. He's saying you should loosen up too a bit, Taki. He was being a little bit stiff in that when he was giving that stuff. I think he's nervous about this decision he made, maybe. I think you should tell her that you're disappointed, but that's but you don't hold it against her. No, my Please. He's gonna say no. Yeah. <sighs> I completely understand that, but oh man, I feel like you should also be helping Mayu. <sighs> Fuck, I understand all of these emotions so well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> こちら。かけましたの。そうだったんだ。うん。編成のバランスですよ。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Prodding ways. No, he's not. Almost equally capable. Uh, maybe Kanade's right. 
I guess I'd like to hear Taki's reasoning for it. Because I do trust him, but she's right in that me in the third years are all blindly trusting him. Are you upset, Reina? Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm, that's big of you to say, Raina. Yeah, doubt is seeping in. Oh, <laughs> don't doubt his decision. Oh. That was a private conversation, Raina. Maybe I feel like Kumiko is feeling like she's being scolded a bit because she's thinking doubts. Damn. Yeah, include Mayu in shit. Oh, I'm glad someone's talking to her. I liked that scene because I liked that Mayu had someone who sort of was in her corner fully. It's like everyone else is telling Kumiko to be more upset about it. Or not everyone else, but a lot of pe other people are. Hmm. Good. I hope you mean that. She sounds like she means it. <laughs> I'm proud of you. That's strong. That's good to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what good voice acting. <laughs> I really felt that. What got that? Shit, man. This is so well written. <laughs> mm, can't just leave people behind. Yeah, you're trying to reach even higher goals than last year. <laughs> Rain is running out of time. Mm. It didn't feel as sincere as I think she was hoping. Wow, she disappeared. Aww. Good job apologizing. <laughs> うまくできなくて辛いって言うんじゃなくてさ。わかります。ああ、今はそういう話じゃない。クミコちゃんから見てどうなんです今の北口。おお、ポケミケ。そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そ
What's Kumiko's true feelings on this? I think she is doubting him. But Rain has got him too on too much of a pedestal. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stay strong, Kumiko. And I don't think you should let her leave. I think you should talk this out more. Oh. Oh. That's so sad. Whose dog is that? Is she going to talk to Taki? This is what I want. I want her to have a conversation with him. Mm. Oh no. Oh no! Don't end the episode there! Shit. Oh, damn it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yes, this is the drama that, that the whole season was like properly leading up to. I knew it was coming. And it's here and it's scary. Because there's a lot to talk about, because there's a lot of character motivations that are going on here. And I think it's really, really well written because I understand each and every person in this conflict. When I'm watching conflicts like this, right? I think a well written conflict doesn't necessarily have to have every character be right, you know? But it just needs to. Um. Like, it, it just sort of, like, just needs to be somewhat believable that people would, like, feel like this, right? Um, and, but, like, a great conflict, like, a really, really great conflict will have it so that, like, everyone has, you know, some very legitimate points. <laughs> and so, like, in this situation, I think every single person's position, I don't think anyone is being unreasonable. Um, which I think this show is good at overall. A lot of the time, these characters aren't being entirely unreasonable in, in most situations, you know? Um, and that's what makes it so hard. I mean, I don't know how this show sort of consistently writes drama this well, because it, it's like the, writing a, a, a conflict like this, I feel like is so hard that it, it would be like, okay, yeah, you might be able to do it in one of the seasons, but um, but then the other seasons would have to have, like, drama that isn't quite as balanced. But this show has very, very balanced drama, and I think it's like, they present a legitimate problem, and then they have all of the characters act within character, but appropriately. Like, they don't have them be, like, entirely unreasonable, because... <sighs> Because it's real. This is a very, very difficult situation. Um, because I, I agree with Reina in that. Look, if we're here, we should be trusting Taki. And like, obviously, Reina has, um, has her own biases in place, right? She loves Taki. Um, she will trust him more than anything. And I think if she wants to win at nationals, she also wants to sort of attribute that partially to Taki and to his decisions and um and also Reina has I think in the back of her mind the idea that time is running out this is probably her last chance to go to nationals and or the last chance for her to go to it with Kumiko which is the big thing right like to to actually be playing music with Kumiko, I think she wants to go out on a bang, go out on the greatest achievement of their lives, make these three years feel like fully worth it. And so she's, you know, she's thinking, well, now our music sounds good. We're doing things the way that we said we would always do them. Taki is in, is in top form and he's like choosing people based on their musical talent. Th this is the chance that we have. Let's not lose this chance. Um, so I agree with her on that stuff, especially because like the point of an instructor and of a coach and, um, and situations like that is you were supposed to, um, you're, you're supposed to have someone who is 
purely focused on you doing the best that you can do and will make the decisions that the players wouldn't be able to. If they didn't have Taki, they, would, they wouldn't just be choosing things based on skill. They wouldn't because they couldn't because it's like people feel like, you know, students are on the same level as us. So people will always doubt your decision, saying you're playing, playing favorites. Um, and even if you they don't say that, you might subconsciously be playing favorites, you know. But um, but Taki is outside of the system. He's he's above. He's not in the social hierarchy. So he will genuinely make decisions that he thinks are best. And that's why you have people like that. I have um, a person that I know, and I'm I'm going to be vague about it because I don't want to out them. But I have a person that I know that does sort of sport coaching, and they were telling me at one point um that uh that in the sport coaching they were doing um the people that were on the team like they were asked to coach this sport and the people that were on the team uh there was a few people who were like oh this is uh friends with this real oh no not friends but like the the brother or whatever of this really important person or the whoever of this really important person and um and they weren't as good as some of the other players. And um, the the coach w didn't really have the full freedom to like change it around. And there was too much politics going on and couldn't like choose the best players for the team, which is completely against what a coach is supposed to do. And it's like, because these, these players, like this is, they'd been doing this already. They'd been doing it for a while. This is the team that they had chosen because these are the important people, you know, this is this person's team and this person is doing this. Um, so he like doesn't the, like they don't get to play the best that they can play because they're not allowing the person who's supposed to be the impartial um, skill person <laughs> to make those decisions. So it's really difficult because Rain is right. You got to trust that like you, you, you got to in situations like this. Um, when, you know, everyone has sort of different opinions on who should play, there, there's got to be someone who makes those decisions and you've decided that's Taki, so it's Taki, you know? But at the same time, one, Reyna is so sort of tunnel visioned about that, that she's not, uh, she, she doesn't care how other people feel, which I think is, is the big thing. Like, she can still have that opinion, but also be super sympathetic to how other people feels, uh, feel, and she isn't. She is just frustrated with people because they're, um, they're doubting Taki. Like, when people are walking by and saying, like, do we really need more tubers? Maybe, maybe, I feel like, um, you know, blah, 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 should have just whatever. And they have, those three girls were having a very casual, private conversation. They, they weren't, like I get, you know, you should you you shouldn't really be talking behind people's backs or whatever. But I don't think that was too harsh a conversation. If there was, like, they weren't even saying like, "Oh, Taki's losing it. He's terrible" or whatever. They were kind of just, you know, having as as Kumiko called it, a very minor gripe. And she, like, he overhears their private conversation and scolds them for it. I I don't think that's super fair, you know. Um. And she is, uh, and like in situations, you know, a girl in the in the board meeting or whatever brings up a very legitimate concern of, of um, after the auditions, a lot of students are feeling quite deflated and feeling a lack of motivation. What should we do about that? You know, and that's a that's a really smart and intelligent and emotional response to have to that situation to bring it up in that meeting and say like, is there something we can do about this because these students you know we want them to keep playing with us and such um and uh reina kind of dismisses it as like well this is how we're doing things and they should suck it up you know and that that's not the the way we should go about these situations so it's really difficult because she's got she's right in a way and she's wrong in a way um and then like kumiko has this i understand her feeling of like of saying to Mayu at the start, I'm just gonna, I just need to take a bit of a break. Is it okay if I'm alone for a while? And she is 100% in her rights to say that. That's, that is a, like, 
an incredibly kind way to reject someone that is she it, like that is the best way to handle saying no to someone in a situation like that i am like i'm proud of her for wording it like that and and being that respectful because she is staying strong um as best she can but the truth is it's really affecting her and i really understand that that feeling of her going through the hallways and saying like i feel what i think is anger <laughs> but i don't know at what which i've felt that exact feeling where you're just like you know it's not their fault you know it and you're so frustrated but you know it's not their fault so you're just saying to them like hey yeah don't worry i just need to i just need to be alone for a second and i want maya to be able to understand that but but the problem is this is exactly what maya was saying and and in a lot of these situations i feel like you know we're we're not we're not making sure that Mayu is fine. And I think Kumiko is getting a little frustrated with her because she's she she is kind of apologizing too much and trying to like backtrack too much, which I think is just hurting Kumiko more. But it's because Mayu is trying to mend these bridges and is trying to be fine with everything. It's not her fault. And she's like, now that it's happened, she's like, okay, um, just so you know, it's still on the table. And like, I just... I care about us being friends more than anything else. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, it's really difficult. It's so difficult. Um, so like I, in my perfect world, essentially what Kumiko was doing with, uh, Shuichi, I believe some of the male names I'm, I'm worse with. Cause there's only like two men in this whole show, <laughs> but, um, what she was doing with him where she like put on a really brave face and she was like it's fine she was the most uh she was the most skilled so get your ass up and like she was like sort of making a joke about it you know um that's what i think the best thing to do like i in my perfect world kumiko talks to mayu and says i think i think you have to understand i am disappointed i th this is absolutely not your fault i'm disappointed that i didn't make it but that's but this is also what i want i want people who are most skilled to be the ones up there you know and i mean ha has hazuki even said that haruki hazuki oh my gosh i don't want to be terrible with names while i'm doing deep dives but um, even said it in that scene where she said, like, I mean, this is, you know, this is the, like, I, I believed in previous years that the most skilled player would get there. And I continue to believe that because she has been working her way up. She didn't make it in previous years. And now she's finally making it because she's fucking awesome and been working hard at it. And it's like, if now when she does make it, everyone around her is saying, well, Taki's decisions are kind of bad right now. <laughs> like, how does that you know, uh, how does that talk, talk about her skill set? You know, she's been working so hard to make it up, make up there. Obviously, they're not talking about the decision for her to be in the, in the performance. But, like, if people are doubting his decisions now when you finally feel like you made it, it probably feels a bit like shit, you know? So she has to believe that Taki is, is making the right decisions because then it justifies all of the hard work she's put into the time up until now. Um... I think it's unfair of Reyna to have said that um, that Kumiko is a failure of a president, but obviously she's very hurt right now um, because she feels like Kumiko is sort of betraying her with Taki and like not trusting in him fully. Um, I, I mean, I want I want them to have that talk, like Taki and Kumiko to have a talk about like what what are the decisions going into this, and I feel like I feel like Taki, you should be having like this is this is difficult right because you give people an inch they might want a mile but i do feel like taki should be giving some of his reasonings more publicly just so people know so that they know what his thinking behind it is but as i said people may then 
think of that as an excuse of like, okay, well, this is a discussion or they start to pick apart his reasoning or whatever, you know, when it might just be better to just make the decisions. And it's like, well, I don't need to tell you guys why I'm making the decisions because it's not your job to make the decisions. It's my job. <sighs> it's so difficult. Um, I did really like that scene where, where she came home, Kumiko came home towards the end and her sister, uh, said, I think it was her sister, right? Uh, said, um, you look devastated. Like, did you get in a fight or something? And she goes, what? And she goes, well, you look devastated. And she looks in the reflection and she sees that like her face is just tired. And I think in my mind, that is also a, a, um, a take on her character throughout the entire episode, which is like, even when she's trying to put on a brave face, everyone can tell that she's not happy about it. And like it's, it's, even if she's trying to cheer people up and say like, okay, no, I mean, this is what Taki decided. Everyone can tell that she's doubting the decision too, which is giving a different energy, you know? So it's difficult because I, I feel like that moment is Kumiko, in my, my interpretation of that scene is in that moment, Kumiko is realizing I'm not as good at hiding it as I thought I was, <laughs> which is which is bad because I, I could be part of the reason that the energy of the club is down because I'm not taking this well enough. Oh man, it's it's so difficult. I also wanna um, also wanna point out, which I wrote this down at the start of the episode because I was watching the OP more closely this time, um, specifically for imagery about Mayu. And uh, I just wanted to point out like, okay, so this is, this is the intro, right? Um, so what you have is at the very start of the intro, you've got all the characters, like you get, you get all their little introductory scenes where they're looking at the camera and they're smiling and whatever. Right. Um, and then after that, you start to go into characters that are outside the school characters that aren't part of the story anymore. Right. Like, you know, she hasn't shown up. <laughs> she, I mean, she's shown up once in the season or so far, I think. Um, she like, they're not part of the story right now. But the point is, these are characters that are on the outside. Um, and then you have this scene of like, these two want to play the, the solo together. Um, and they, or the Soli, um, they want to play together, right? And, uh, and so obviously they're both upset that they can't. And then it cuts to Mayu, which I think is really interesting. Like after all of that, Mayu, like her introduction shot is so far into the OP that like this, this introduction shot is for me literally showing Mayu getting between those two and also showing that she's on the outside of all of these characters. All of these characters are, are all introduced together. A lot of their shots as well are, are like specifically like shots, group shots, you know, like they they're, they're they're all hanging out together. There are like Canada even like jumps into into other people's shots, which also fits her personality as well. But these characters are like in shots with other people a lot of the time, and Mayu is completely on her own. Kumiko, to be fair, although Kumiko is also on her own in that in her shot, um, which also may you know be a, be a thing of her feeling a little bit isolated. But then Kumiko gets a lot of shots with Reina afterwards, where Mayu kind of just gets that shot alone. So yeah, I, I I mean also I also have to point out the fact that the environment behind Mayu is like literally like a foreign environment. It's so interesting. That's why I love OPs and I think you should watch OPs all the time. <laughs> when people skip openings of shows, like I get it if it's like there's a major spoiler in it or whatever. Um, but I I love openings and I love looking into the symbolism of them and because they often I imagine I don't know too much about how they make OPs but I imagine you know they've got the season at the very least all planned out <laughs> before they make the OP um, they know everything that's gonna happen and then they they're making the OP so they're making the OP with the full picture of everything that's gonna happen and they're making the context make sense by the end of you know, the, the run. Um, so a lot of the time I love when, when OPs do stuff like this, which is they're sort of implying stuff that happens, but you're not going to pick that up unless, until you like know the more, more of the context behind these characters. So it's, it's really great. It's, it's brilliant. That was a long discussion. Thanks for watching my reaction to Sound Euphonium season three, episode nine. 
um, make sure to support the video if you can, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And my Patreon account is in the description below if you want the full-length reactions, as well as early access, exclusive videos, lots of other good stuff. Um, and go to my Gen Watches One Piece channel if you like One Piece and you want to check that out as well. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.